In this presentation, we will enter bank reconciliations for the first month of operations. We've entered two months of data and we're going to be doing bank reconciliations then back to back. We will do this so that it will be able to show the benefits and the drawbacks of the first month of operations bank reconciliation and the second month of operations. In other words, the first month is a little bit more complicated oftentimes, mostly because of the beginning balance we'll have to be dealing with. So we'll discuss that here. And then the second month, we'll talk about those outstanding items that will be there from the first bank reconciliation. We'll do this with an actual mock bank statement, which is something that you don't often see in practice problems, but something that's very useful because that's how it would be done in practice. Bank reconciliations are very, very important for companies of all sizes to be doing. We'll be entering the bank reconciliations into QuickBooks Pro 2020, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by selecting the view dropdown and going to the open windows list. We're now gonna be doing the bank reconciliation. When considering the bank reconciliation, we can see that over here in the banking and the reconciliation item within the home page. I typically like, however, to go to the banking section and go down to the reconcile section here. Now, when we consider the bank reconciliation, let's just think about what we're doing before we go into it. If we look at the report, then let's go to the reports up top. We're going to go to the company and financial. We're going to go down to the balance sheet standard. Within the balance sheet standard, we'll change the dates up top. I'm going to change them from 010120 uh, to 12-31-20. And let's actually change it to 013120, the end of January. We'll be doing the bank reconciliation as of the end of January. We're going to say OK, and we'll see that we have the checking account here. We've been entering the data in accordance with the, uh, the checking account, entering data into the checking account. We've been writing checks. We've been entering deposits. Now, the bank, of course, once they get the records, will also be uh, recording our information in their system, which is a great check for us because now we can verify whether we are OK or not by double checking against the bank for the checking account, which is a huge internal control, not only for cash, but all other cycles because they all run through cash at some point uh, in time. Now, you would think then if we looked at the bank statement, it would be a balance of 94,436,17 as of January 31st, 2020, if everything was done well. So, and then you'd think, well, if it's off, it must be some problem possibly, and we could fix the problem. But that's not necessarily the case. It's almost never the case. Why? Because there's going to be outstanding items. For example, the checks that we have written have not yet cleared the bank, uh, maybe if they're written at the end of the month. So it was correct for us to decrease our balance because we know that we wrote the check. But they haven't cleared the bank yet, and therefore there's going to be timing differences in terms of when it has cleared the bank. So the objective then of the bank reconciliation is to tie out this balance to the bank balance in so doing we can label exactly what the difference is that giving us confidence that everything that we have entered thus far is correct so how can we verify and check our numbers to the bank we reconcile what the difference between our balance is to the bank and that gives us assurance about everything that we have done within the cash account so that's going to be our goal this is going to be our bank statement so our bank statement obviously this is in excel so um it's a mock bank statement, but we'll actually have a mock bank statement here, just like we would in practice. You want to actually have the bank statement. You want to be running the bank statement as of a specific date. So you don't typically want to basically run a transaction detail list out of, say, an online account, because you're not going to have a clear beginning and ending point that way. You want to get the statements, because the statements will have a clear ending point as of the end of last month, which will be the beginning point as of the end of this month. And then we'll have a clear ending point as of the end of this month, which will be the ending point as of the end of next month. So we really want the actual bank statements to do uh, the bank reconciliation process. What we're going to do within the bank statement, this is how the bank statement will typically be laid out. We'll have, you know, the beginning balance here. We'll have the additions. We'll have everything that was taken out and then the ending balance down below. And then the detail will be, be, will be below that where we have the checks, the checks that were written and the other withdrawals or the decreases in the accounts, and then the increases, the deposits, which will sum up to the totals we see up top. Now, 
The problem with the first bank reconciliation is often this first number, the 25,000. In other words, if you're going from one accounting system to another and you're entering the beginning balances in the system, you might have some outstanding checks from the prior system that you will in essence possibly have to deal with here that have cleared here but weren't written uh, in January but were written last December but they're clearing in January. We also have this beginning balance which is an issue too because the beginning balance might not show up uh, if you if you basically entered the balance as a journal entry. So this is often the problem with the first bank uh, statement, the first bank reconciliation. If on the other hand you started and you opened the bank just as you started the business then you won't have any problems because this number will be zero and you'll have only additions. So typically this beginning balance number is often the problem with the first bank reconciliation when you have an account that already has something in it that you are applying out to uh, the, the process here for the bank rec. Let's go back to QuickBooks. Within QuickBooks, we're now going to open the bank reconciliation process. We're going to go to the banking dropdown. We're going to go down to reconcile. And then within reconcile, we're going to do the reconciliation as of we're going to say 2020 it's going to be january 31st 2020 and the beginning balance here is correct right it's correct here because why we entered it as the opening balance because we entered it into the opening balance as we started the checking account the beginning balance here is correct at that 25,000. if it were not correct if you entered the balance in some other fashion then what you can do is you can say well it's it's already in there so i'm going to keep it. this would be zero then and then we would just check it off as we basically do the bank reconciliation process as if it was another deposit in other words what we're basically going to do the strategy that we'll have is we'll check everything off here's the beginning balance we'll check that off as being found and then we'll go back through all of these we'll find all of these by checking them off one by one then we'll check these off one by one once they're all found we will then come to a cleared balance of the 109,415. The 25,000, if it's not there, if it's not there as the beginning balance for the first month of operation, one workaround then is to simply check it off as a deposit in the first month of operations. So that's a little bit uh, kind of a funky thing to do, a little bit of strange. However, it'll reconcile in that format. And then once you go forward, your beginning balance will always be correct and you'll be good to go. Now we're going to put the ending balance, which is the 109,415. Uh, so I'm going to put the ending balance here. It's going to be the 109,415. And then we have the service charges and the interest. Now the service charges and interest are things that uh, the bank might charge service charges, which we wouldn't know about until we reconcile. We could enter that here and assign a, an account to it. We could have interest income that we can put here and assign the interest income account to it. I'm not going to do that here because I would rather do that in the actual bank reconciliation process. I would actually rather add them and then put them into the bank reconciliation process. Why? Because if you put it here, it doesn't show up in the same fashion. So if I have a problem and we're off in some format, this thing can confuse the problem. Whereas if I just enter it uh, manually, then I know exactly what it is and I can and I can push forward and I can figure out what the difference is. So I'd rather just add it manually so I don't use these two items. So I'm going to say continue then. Here's going to be our bank reconciliation layout. It's for the period up top. We can hide transactions after the statement date if we so choose by selecting this item. It's going to hide transactions after uh, the 31st. You would think then that transactions after the 31st would not have cleared so this could be a very useful feature for someone like us because we had entered two months of data. Now we're going to be reconciling uh, month one and then month two. If you do this for a year, for example, enter a year's worth of data and then go reconcile it, you're going to have a whole lot of data in here that's not, at, not applicable because it's going to be past the date of reconciliation. So for us, it's useful for us to select this. We remove everything that was entered after January. All the February information is now uh, gone. And then we have the highlight uh, marked. So highlight marked, you can turn this on or off. I like to have that on. If you just want to basically check everything off and see if it works, you can try that, right? You can, and this might be more easy to check everything off. Note what we're going to do here is we're going to have to go line by line. We're going to have to go line by line and check this off. Here's 12,000. 
here it is on the other side here's 16 here it does it on the other side tedious process but it's worth it's really worth doing because it does give you a lot of assurance now if everything was to line up perfectly you could try to check everything off and see if it if it lines up if it works ours does not because we still have a difference down here so we it doesn't work for us so then we can unmark it and say ah oh, darn it we're gonna have to actually do the work and check them all off and then we have the beginning balance here's the 25 thousands item you have marked as cleared as we check these items it'll then mark these items that have been cleared in essence what we're looking for is for this balance down here the difference balance to be zero once this 84 415 is zero then we're going to be in balance so in other words here's the ending balance here's the balance that's the balance on our bank statement so if we go to our bank statement that's the 109 415 and then this is going to be the cleared balance this is everything that we checked off plus the beginning balance it's at 25,000. the beginning balance now once we check everything off it'll increase and decrease in accordance with those items once these two are the same then the difference will be zero will be reconciled will be good to go now or the general rule will be this anything on our bank statement here the bank statement from the bank we should be able to find in our quickbooks system if we cannot find something on the bank statement in the quickbooks system it's probably the case that we haven't added it to the quickbooks system it's probably not the case that the bank statement is wrong it's probably the case that we have to add it and if it, if that is indeed the case then we'll go in and we'll just simply add it things like service charges or some other kind of transactions that might have happened that we didn't record then we'll just simply add them now there could be things however on this side on our books which we do not find on the bank statement that's what we would expect why because we entered things in our books up to the 31st things that the bank would not know about if there was a timing difference for example these checks down here may not have cleared the bank because we wrote them on the 31st and the the people these two people adam and erica would have to take the check cash the check in their bank and their bank would have to talk to our bank before our bank would know about those transactions therefore those will be the outstanding items the outstanding items then are what are going to be used to actually make the bank reconciliation note that this is only the bank reconciliation worksheet once we once we've completed this quickbooks will then create the bank reconciliation which will reconcile the bank balance to our balance based on outstanding items the reconciling items those reconciling items will be those that are not checked on this system all right so we're going to do this again tedious kind of job to do it but this is this is how you have to do it here and it's not too bad once you do it if you find everything over here has to match on the bank statement we know we're at twenty-five thousand. if we were to tie everything out and check everything else off then it's a requirement that we must reconcile so convince yourself of that it has to work you know there's no way it cannot work if because all the numbers you're just checking them off to see that they match they're exactly the same so just convince yourself that it has to work other and and if there's something wrong then you'll adjust the books if you need to do so to the bank if you think the bank is right which it usually is okay so let's do this we're going to say let's go to the deposits first that might be easier note the deposit has the amount and the date that's all we have we don't have the check number to help us that's why we really want the deposits here to be matching in the same type of order as they are grouped in the bank in the bank statement and that's why we use the undeposited funds you'll recall to help group those transactions together to hopefully put them in the same grouping if they're not then you'll have to tie out the grouping of deposits and hopefully that won't be too bad and you can figure that out so we're going to say the 50,000 is here and we see the 50,000 here so we're going to check that off and I'm going to basically highlight this this would be something that is actually better done I think with with a uh, unless you have two screens you can do it on two screens or to actually print this thing out and use the old highlighter and highlight these things then we have the 65,000 and the 65,000 note what I'm doing here is I'm going from the bank statement to the QuickBooks system not the other way around because I expect to find everything here on the bank statement I don't expect to find everything on the bank statement here so I'm finding I'm going from here to the bank statement I got the 628 and then we have the 628 so that one's good and then we've got the uh 20,500 the 20,500 that looks good notice we still have this 9,955.50 that's not checked off it's not on the bank statement that's what's expected because it's an outstanding item 
that's okay. It's at the end of the month. We would expect that to be the case. How can we check to see if that number is correct? We can look at the next bank statement. We can go online and look at the online checking to see if it cleared sometime in February, which is what we would expect. And if it is, it's an outstanding item. That's what we would expect to see. Okay, then we're going to go to the checks. Note And also note the dates here are not going to match. Notice the dates don't match over here. And I tried to make the dates as accurate as possible to kind of show you this kind of system. But note the dates aren't going to match over here because... Uh, we wrote, we deposited in our system before they cleared the bank. It's again, could take three days or so to clear the bank. So on the, on the deposits, it should be fairly close, the, the dates, but there could be some difference there, like three days or something. But over here on the checks, the, the difference could be quite large in terms of we, we entered it when we wrote the check. And then it depends on who got the check and who, when they cleared it and what their bank did as to when the bank would know about it. Therefore, the, these dates as to when we wrote the check will not tie out and could be significantly different than the dates that the checks were cleared. Fortunately, with the checks, however, we have the added benefit of the check number. So the check number should tie out uh, as well as the amount. And so that, that gives us an added amount of assurance for it. So we have the check number 1001 and 12,000 here. We can check those two. The date's not going to help us, right? And not too much. So 12,100, 12,000. There we go. Checking that off. Going to make this green. So we'll right click, make it green. We got 1002, 16,000. 1002, 16,000. Checking that off, making this green. 1003, 7,000. 1003, 7,000. Back over here, highlighting, checking that off. We've got 1004, 400. 1004, 400. Back over here, highlighting checking that off then we're going to go to the 1005 598 1005 598 back over checking that off then we have the 1008 620 1008 we had to skip down here to 620 we have two that have not cleared that's to be expected we would think that that would be the case so we're good on that and then we have the 1010 and that's going to be here. So there we have that. Notice once again, we went from the bank statement to the books, found everything on the bank statement on the books, and we're left with some on the books, which aren't on the bank statement. We're assuming that these were outstanding, have not yet cleared, will clear in February. If we wanted to then check that, we could go to the February bank statement and see if they have then cleared or to go to the online checking and see if they have cleared at that point. Now, we still have a couple items down here. That's going to be the withdrawals and bank service charges. So there's our bank service charges, which I like to just basically enter. There's, this adds up to 90. So we're at 95. This adds up to 95, right? So that's going to be our difference. We have to add them. These are going to be items that we didn't know about or we didn't enter in our system. But I'm pretty sure the bank is right. Therefore, what are we going to do? We're going to fix our books. So that means that we're going to have to add the withdrawal. Now, withdrawal means that we just went to the bank and took money out and we don't know where the cash went. So the withdrawals, there's two ways we can deal with it. If we if we saved the receipt, then we'll know exactly where, what we spent it on, which hopefully is a business thing. But if we don't have the receipt, then we have to determine, well, was it personal money that we withdrew or was it for the business? If it was for the business, then we can put it into something like uh, some kind of expense like supplies or miscellaneous perhaps. If it was for the, if it was for a deposit for the owner, they took it out for their personal use, then we, we can put it into something like draw, uh, draws account, which is an equity account, which won't be on the income statement. So that's, that, that's what we have to determine with, with cash. That's why cash is kind of a problem for record keeping. So we're going to assume that we, that this 80,000 first off is going to be out of, for the business expense this time. And if you're doing bookkeeping for somebody else, and you're reconciling that you're gonna have to ask them questions like this right you're gonna have to say all right there's the 80 you know if, what do you think that was for is that a business related or not you know we would recommend you you have the receipts or write checks out of the out of the books if you can because we don't know where the cash went uh and they could tell you and you can get to a rule basically and say well we're going to put that to miscellaneous expense or we're going to put that to draws or something like that here we're going to be putting it to the miscellaneous expense so I'm going to go back to QuickBooks. I'm going to open up our register and we'll actually enter this. We're going to go to the banking dropdown. We're going to go to the use the register. 
and then we'll make the adjustment as we go, which is as of 013120. And this is going to be, I'm going to call it other because, it, and, and there's no payee. I don't know where the payee is. It's going to be for the amount of, we said $80. $80. And I'm going to put it into miscellaneous uh, expense. Let's see if they have a miscellaneous expense here. I don't see one. So I'm going to go ahead and put M I S C I'll abbreviate it expense. Now, you got to be careful with the miscellaneous expense when you set it up because if you have a lot of, of information in there, it's not going to help you for your bookkeeping, number one. And the IRS may be suspicious of a lot. And, you know, if you report on the IRS like a miscellaneous expense and it's really large, then the IRS, when you do your taxes, might be suspicious. Note that the, the idea between these two things, if, if you were to record this as either a draw or an expense, if it was a draw, that would mean the, the owner took it out for personal use. What that would mean is you would put it into the equity section. It would not affect the income statement. If it was a business expense, which we're assuming here, we're going to be putting it into the expense. What's that going to do? It's going to lower net income, which makes the company look worse. However, you want to look bad sometimes when you report your taxes. So the IRS then might be suspicious of cash transactions that are recorded in uh, an, a miscellaneous expense account, right? So that, that's going to be the kind of the play between the, those two things. You want to be as accurate as possible for your record keeping for your books. And then for tax purposes, you want to be accurate as well. Notice, of course, taxes are going to be suspicious about expenses because they're deductions. So you want to be really clear if uh, when it is a, when you have the legitimate deduction, you would like to be able to classify the legitimate deduction, have the receipts for the legitimate deduction and be able to organize it in the proper category. So, uh, so again, so just be careful with obviously not being able to do that. Right. <laughs> so we're going to say set up, it's going to be a miscellaneous expense. That's the one we're going to say, okay. And then we're going to say enter. And then if I go back to my reconciliation in the checking account, we can then check off the $80. Then we're only off by the 15. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to highlight the $80. We're going to say that has been done right clicking that now that that's the bank service charges so i'm going to go back over i'm going to go to the checking account again and we're going to say this is going to be other no check number and i'm just going to put 15 and this is going to be bank service charges now you could put the bank that you're in whatever bank it is but i'm just going to put the bank service charges here it's going to be the 15 we're going to say okay back to the reconciliation if we go back to the reconciliation, there's the 15. Once we check it off, you'll see this will go down to zero. So we check this off. This goes down to zero. So this 109,415 was the amount on the bank statement, you'll recall here. And now we've checked everything off, including the beginning balances and all the adjustments now by the giving us the detail, which of course lines up to the ending balance, which we have now. So the reconciled amount is here but we didn't check everything off. That just, that just represents the reconciled amount, all the ones we checked off plus the beginning balance. The ones that are not checked off are gonna be the difference from, if we look at our balance sheet, the amount reported on the balance sheet and the amount that's reported on the bank statement. So now we've determined the amounts that are different specifically, the amounts that are gonna be the, the difference between this amount and the amount on the bank reconciliation will be back to the reconciliation, the unchecked amounts in this worksheet. Now let's go ahead and run this worksheet and it'll actually give us then reports for the bank reconciliation. So we're going to go ahead and reconcile now and it, it'll give us the reconciliation reports. Now you want to print the reconciliation reports generally. Uh, I'm going to look at both the summary and detail. And the reason you want to print them is because uh, it's it's not a type of report that you can you can go back to a lot. There could be changes and whatnot and problem like if something if there's a problem in the date of how something is recorded, then it could uh, affect what the prior bank reconciliation would look like. And therefore, it's a little bit more glitchy within within QuickBooks to be able to go back and print prior bank reconciliation. So what you want to do is say, hey, this is where it was as of now. Print the bank reconciliation. And if there's any problem in the future, if anybody backdates anything or, you know, puts in transactions with a date prior to that messes something up or something like that, then you, you have the hard copy of the bank reconciliation or the digital copy of the bank reconciliation that you can go back to. 
Now, the bank reconciliation is a little bit confusing to read within QuickBooks because they make it they make it kind of funny. Now, you know, because they give you more detail, in other words, than you really need. So they, for example, they give you the beginning balance and then they give you the cleared balances here to get to the 109, uh, 415. W but we already know that, you know, that's not really, this is really where the bank's reconciliation starts. The 109, 415 then is the bank balance. That's the bank balance that we see here. That's this balance. And then we're going to reconcile to the book balance, which we see on the balance sheet, which is the 94, 341. And that's going to be on the balance sheet. If I go to the balance sheet, 94, 341. Back to the reconciliation. Therefore, this from this number to this number is really the reconciliation. That that's really all we need. The stuff above it is the cleared balance. We already have that on the bank statement. That's not, and we have it in the books. This number to this number is what we need, and we have the outstanding checks. Those checks that we wrote, which have not yet cleared the banks, are the different and the outstanding deposits. However, you you really want more detail than this because what I would really like to see is exactly what these checks are. There's five of them. I don't know what they are. I'd like to know exactly what these checks are. And that'll give us to our ending balance. And then these new transactions are the transactions that happened after uh, January 31st, which again is not really necessary. We don't need that information really for the reconciliation. All we want are these numbers and I really want the detail for these two. Therefore, I would, I would if you're gonna do anything, print the detailed report, not this report. Uh, if you're only going to print one of the two because you want the detail between these two, even though the detailed report is even more cumbersome to look at because it has a, a lot more numbers that we don't really need, but it has the ones we really do need, which are these five checks and whatever deposit this was. So I'm going to go ahead and print this. Uh, let's go ahead and go to, I'll just print it as a PDF since it's one file. So we're going to uh, save report as a PDF. If I go to print, save report as a PDF, and then I'm gonna go to our desktop and we'll put it on the desktop in the Get Great Guitars 2020. This is gonna be section nine. So I'm gonna add the section, add a new folder. I'm gonna call it section nine. Section nine, <laughs> there we go. And then I'll double click on that. And then we're going to say this is the bank reconciliation summary as of, let's say, January. And then we're going to say OK. So there we have that. Going to close this back out then. And then we want the reconciliation detail, which also was printed as we did this. Now, this is the same kind of information, but now they give us all the details. So once again, the beginning part of it, we don't really need. These are clear transactions. Here's the checks and payments, all these checks and payments. Okay, fine. That's great. We don't really need that, though. We got the deposits. Here's all the ones that cleared. You can see it by the check off here. Then we have the uh, uncleared items. So what we really want, once again, is this number, the 109,415. That's what's on the bank statement. And then the uncleared items, the items that we had <laughs> processed that haven't cleared the bank yet. And now we have the five checks broken out. The, these are the actual checks that are there. Why do we want this? Because now we can actually go into those checks and see if they will clear in February. And if they have, then we, we know it's just a timing difference. Okay, we're like, well, okay, it's just a timing difference between when the bank knows the transactions that we already know about because we wrote the check. So if it's just a timing difference there, and then we have the deposit, same, we know exactly what the deposit is. That gives us our bank balance that will be on the balance sheet, the 94,341.17. That's on the balance sheet here, the 94,341.17. Back to the reconciliation. And then again, everything down below that is new transactions after January, which we're not really concerned about with this report. So this is the report we really want. However, you only really want this detail here. And if you're trying to make this nice for somebody else, you may actually want to just print it to Excel and delete all the non unnecessary information. Although anybody that's going to read it that should be able to pick out the information anyways. But again, if you want to make it nice, you could probably export it to Excel, delete, you know, the unnecessary information and then put in, put in the necessary information and provide that for them. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and print it. Let's just print it out. And we're going to say, I'll use the cute PDF printer this time and print the report. 
and we're going to say where is it going to go i'll put it into the section nine now get great guitars section nine and i'll call this then let's put this down here so i can see it the uh, bank rec reconciliation detail as of january and we'll say save that and there's the bank reconciliation now note that we hit the, we entered this as of the first month and we had that beginning balance type of issue you may also run into an issue where you had outstanding items as of the end of last time period december that cleared the bank in this time period if that is the case just note that you would go into the checking account you'd still have to add them and then you would simply add them as of december when they were written as of last month what that'll do is it, it, it won't affect the current the current time period but it'll it'll adjust the cash account as is needed uh to to do that so you would then basically make the checks as of the prior month it would be basically a beginning balance type of detail that you would have to enter into the beginning balance in order to in essence check those off next time we'll be running and we'll see this kind of similar situation next time when we do the bank reconciliation for the second month because the second month our beginning balance will be right if i go back here we will have the beginning balance of the 109,415, which will be the beginning balance on the bank statement not a problem there as we might have in the first bank reconciliation however in the second month we'll be able to see these outstanding checks what's going to happen with these outstanding uh, items that we have which are these items they're going to clear in february so we're actually going to check them off in february so on the bank statement these items will show up in february even though we wrote them in january and therefore we will clear them we will check them off as cleared in february even though the transaction is in the system as of january